Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at how to create an on-screen timer using DaVinci Resolve, which just so happens to be my favorite video editor right now. If you don't have the software, head over to Blackmagic Design's website, and I'll leave a link to that in the description box below. It's a free download. Now, there is a paid version, the studio version, which does unlock some advanced features, but you'll find that the free version should pretty much cover you for every requirement you might have to edit videos for YouTube or any other platform. Now, I'm gonna take you through the whole process from the beginning to the end on how to create the timer. It is quite a lengthy tutorial coming in at around 10 minutes. So for those of you that don't have the time and you simply wanna get access to the timer to use it in your own projects, I've already created the files and uploaded them to my website and I'll leave a link to where you can get them in the description box below. They're created on a green screen background, so all you need to do to use them in your projects is to knock out the green screen, and the timer will then sit on top of your video as an overlay, and you're very welcome to use these on any of your projects, be they personal or commercial in nature. But for those of you willing to learn how to do it yourself, let's go ahead and check out how to create and customize our own timer using DaVinci Resolve. So I have the latest version of DaVinci Resolve 17 open, and I'm going to first of all create a green layer, which we can use as green screen so that I can transport this timer into any video application that I choose. I can use it in DaVinci Resolve, or I can bring it into other applications such as iMovie or Final Cut Pro, or even mobile video editing applications and knock out the green screen in order to use it. So let's start by going into the effects library, going into generators and adding a solid color on our first layer. So I'm in the editing view mode, which is the third icon along the bottom. And I've just dragged that solid color into the first video layer and I'll drag it across and give myself a little space to work with for now. And that color defaults to black. So in the right hand corner, if you can't see it already, click on the inspector option on the top right hand corner and under the generator color, change it to green. I'll just make the preview window a little bit bigger by dragging it down. And now I'm going to click on the titles option in the effects library on the left hand side and I'm going to add not a basic text field, but the one below, which is a dynamic text field. Drag it onto the next layer above my green screen layer, and I'll just stretch it along so we have a little bit more space to work with. And now I'm going to go to the right-hand corner again in the inspector window. In the text box, we're going to right-click by holding down Control-click on a PC or Option-click on a Mac. I'm going to right click in the text box and we're gonna change that to time code. Now, if you drag the timeline marker from left to right, you'll see that you now have a countdown going all the way from zero up to the length that you've placed it on the timeline. So depending on how long you want your timer to be, you can drag that dynamic text field along the timeline until you get to the full duration that you'd like to count down. So I'm going to create one that is five minutes in duration. So in order to get there, I'm going to need to use the plus minus scroller to make it a little bit shorter so that I can now drag those elements all the way up to the five minute mark. First of all, you can see you have hours, minutes and milliseconds which is sometimes a little bit too much for a basic timer. So for this example, I'm gonna reduce the time code down to just minutes and seconds. I'm going to use the write on effect to eliminate the hours section. So I can drag the start point across until we get to just the minutes. I could do the same for the end point and bring that in so that we only have seconds. So this is a much cleaner looking sample. Let's take a look. Okay, so now that we're happy with that, the next thing I'm going to do is change the font style. Now this is gonna be a matter of personal preference, but I actually have one that I downloaded from a font resource online, which I'll leave a link to in the description box below. It kind of reminds me of the font of an alarm clock. So let's go and find that font. Here we go, alarm clock. And if you like, you could change the color, the size, the tracking, and the next thing I like to do is to change the horizontal anchor. 
so that if you have a longer timer, it doesn't jump around from left to right. If you leave it in the middle, you'll find that it can be a little bit jumpy when you're going from seconds to minutes in that transition. So if you click on the horizontal anchor and anchor it left or right, it should keep it in place when you're going from the minutes to second mark. So I'm gonna anchor it to the right and then I'll use my settings to position it where I want on screen. So now for this example, I'm going to place the timer in the top right hand corner. So I'm going to use the XY parameters to position the timer where I want it to be. And I'm going to go back to the title and just reduce the font size a little bit. I think it's a little bit too large for a timer. Back to settings, position, and that looks about right to me. The next thing I'm going to do is to add yet another solid color underneath the timer so that I can separate it from the background when I'm using it on my video clips. So to do that, I'm going to click on generators and drag the solid color in underneath my text layer. Click on video layer two where the solid color is and we're going to zoom it down to make it much smaller. We're gonna unlock the XY so that I can change the dimensions. Zoom down the Y. And then we're going to move the position across so that it sits directly under the typography. So in order to give it a little bit of depth and a simulated 3D effect, I like to add a highlight on top of that background graphic. So to do that, I'm going to go back to generators and drag the solid color just above my black background layer and change it to white, resize it, click on the settings tab again, zoom it down, unlock it, And now we're going to position that on top of our black background. Let's just make it a little bit wider. Okay, it's about right. Adjust the position. And now we're gonna drop the opacity of that white layer right down to around the 30% mark. Actually, we'll go a little bit lower. Let's make it 20%. It almost simulates the reflection of light on an alarm clock. So we've now got our timer, along with the graphics in place in the top right hand corner, all positioned onto a green screen. Now, if you are using DaVinci Resolve for your video editing, you can just group those layers into a new compound clip and call it timer. And that gives you the flexibility to position them all at once without having to move each layer if you wanna go from one position of the screen to another. Now, what if you wanna go in reverse? Instead of counting up from zero through to five minutes, if you wanna go from five minutes to zero, now that we've grouped those elements together, I can right click on it and I can change the clip speed and I can go to reverse speed and click on reverse. Go back to the beginning of our timeline tap on play, and now you'll see that we get the countdown in reverse. I'm going to create both versions of the timer that you've just seen on screen as a zero to five minute timer and five minute countdown to zero. These will be MP4 files with the green screen layer provided so that you can use it in any of your projects. In order to use it, simply head over to my website, link in the description box below, download the zip file containing the animations, bring it into your video project and use the green screen keying effect to knock out the green background. Thanks for watching, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to hit me up with a like and consider subscribing to the channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you're notified of up and coming video releases. And as always, if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to put them in the comments box below. See you on the next one, bye for now.